idea is something called an outlier. And an outlier intuitively is an, observ an observation that is just way far away. In other words, it's unusual. It's much bigger or much smaller than the other numbers. And we can kind of look and say, well, the numbers I gave you, 5, it's kind of like an outlier. It's a, kind of a small class, right? 19, it's a big class. It might, it might be an outlier. On the other hand, you know, it's pretty close to 16, 17, 18. Turns out there actually is a formula for calculating outliers. Now, you may just, like in section 1.1, kind of think about what is an outlier. Intuitively, it's kind of bigger or smaller, but we can do better than that. We can actually come up with a formula for is something an outlier. And the outlier is a little bit kind of form is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to go very clearly with my an example. Okay, a number is an outlier, an outlier, and here's the kind of crazy thing. If it is, there's two possible, here we go, okay, a number is an outlier if dot dot dot, it is less than a uh, Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR, or it is more than Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. Okay, this is the kind of outlier rule right here. And I'm going to do it uh, using the examples from the data before. So basically, the question is are there any small outliers? Well, if we are, we expect it to be that number five. Okay, so let's see. So for our data, we figured out before that Q1 was Q1 was 12.5. We figured out the IQR, remember, was 4. So therefore, 1.5 times the IQR is 1.5 times 4, which is 6. So therefore, Q1 minus... 1.5 times the IQR gets us 12.5 minus 6 gets us 6.5. So this number 6.5 is kind of our threshold for being a small outlier. So anything less than that is an outlier. So is the number 5 an outlier? Well, the answer is yes, because 5 is less than 6.5. 6 would have also been an outlier. 7 would not have been an outlier. Okay? Let's see the way it works for big outliers. Okay, well, we said that Q3 was 16.5. Okay? So we figured out before over here that 1.5 times the IQR is 6. So what is Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR? Well, that's going to be 16.5 plus 6 gets us 22.5. So is 19 an outlier? No, since 19 is less than 22.5. So kind of our threshold for outliers, if you will, are anything less, less than 6.5 and more than 22.5. We do have some numbers less than 6.5. We have one number, it's 5. We have no numbers bigger than 22.5. So we have one small outlier and no big outliers. Sometimes you get like two or three small outliers or two or three big outliers. It, it just, the data just happened to be what it was. Okay? So that's the outlier thing. You'll get lots of examples of that. Okay? The next thing, and really the last thing to talk about, is something called the five-number summary. And it turns out that there are five numbers that do a really good job of kind of capturing the data. And the five numbers are, <clears throat> usually you write them in square brackets, the min, Q1, the median, Q3, and the max. So for the numbers we've been working with all along, we would say that the five number summary is, and here it I'll write it right here, the min of these numbers is 5, Q1 we found was 12.5, the median we found was 13, Q3 we found was 16.5, and the max we found was 19. So this would be the five number summary for these numbers. Okay? It's always in that order. Just put them in commas and kind of square brackets. Okay? 
which actually leads us to our last kind of graph. I think we've forgotten graphs, but no, we're not. Because there's something called a box plot, which is our last kind of graph. And we're saving it for now because it is totally related to the five number summary. Okay? In fact, it's a visual representation of the five number summary. So let me draw you a box plot for our uh, graph numbers. Let me go 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. These are a number of students. Let me just kind of show you how it's related. It's very, very quick. Uh, you put a little bar for the min and a little bar at the max. Then you put another bar, actually it ends up looking like this. I'll just draw the whole thing. You can kind of, we can talk about it. Okay, you can see, so this is a box plot. The y-axis doesn't really matter. In fact, there is no y-axis really. Um, so here's kind of what's going on. There's the min. There's Q1. That line in the middle of the box is the median. There's Q3. And there's the max. Think about it. It's called the box plot because there's this box in the middle. And think about this box. Isn't it actually the IQR? Because the IQR is the difference between Q1 and Q3. So the width of the box is the IQR. Okay? That's a box plot. Um, there are other kind of box plots I want to just talk about in the next page, um, but it's, they're pretty pretty easy as well. Okay? Just two subtle variants of a box plot. We have something called a side by side box plot. And all of that really means is you draw two box plots. So for example, 0, 5, and I'm not going to actually going to make these up. But let's see, the numbers we've been using all along are people in senior math classes. So let's say that looked like this, right? Let's say you all and you would label these seniors. This is number of students. You might also say, well, what if we compare that number of people in, a, in the junior math classes? I don't know, maybe that might look something like this. And that might let you give you some information about comparing juniors versus seniors in terms of their math classes. And just the last idea to talk about in section 1.2 is something called a modified box plot. It's a version of a box plot. And all you do here, the only subtle difference is you represent outliers with dots. So we found before that for our data, 5 was an outlier, right? Remember that? So what we would do, we did a modified box plot of this data, number of students. We first have to figure out what outliers there are. Hey, we figured out 5 is an outlier, put a dot there. Then the box plot begins with the next number that's not an outlier, the smallest number that's not an outlier, which was 8. And then everything else stays the same. Notice we have no big outlier, so it looks like that. So this, this tells us right here that this is an outlier. Okay? This is an example of a modified box plot. If there are no outliers, a modified box plot and a box plot are exactly the same. I certainly have seen box plots, sorry, modified box plots in my life it looks something like this, right? We have three small outliers and then like two big outliers, right? Or something crazy like that, right? Um, but you first obviously have to go through the IQR calculation to figure out which things are outliers and which are not. And I think that wraps up pretty much chapter one.